Welcome to HTML Tutorials. This is lesson number 30. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about a block level element versus a inline element. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have the document open that we've been using throughout this HTML tutorial series. And in this case, I already had that open, so let's go ahead and move forward. So dealing with the block level element, you need to understand that it takes up a whole block level within your HTML document. So in other words, when someone goes to your website, if they were to see a block level element, it's going to take up the full width or the full block within your HTML website. And if you don't understand what I mean, don't worry, I'll explain it a little bit further. A good example of a block level element would be the H1 tag. So let's go ahead and look for that. And once you find the H1 tag within your uh, HTML document, we're going to actually add another HTML uh, element right after that. In this case, I'm going to write a paragraph tag, and a paragraph tag is going to be dealing with a block level element. So let's go ahead and write this is some text, and then we'll close the paragraph tag, hit Control S to save it, and then let's go ahead and open this in our web browser. And if we scroll down, you'll see that this is some text goes to the next line. It didn't go right after the HTML web design tutorials, which is the H1 tag uh, element. Instead, it went to the next line. So in other words, where we have HTML web design tutorials, it takes up that whole block level. And I'll actually have a rectangle that I'll draw around that just to demonstrate what I mean. So where you see that rectangle at, it takes up that whole block, which is the reason that that paragraph tag cannot sit right after the HTML web design tutorials, okay? And also because the paragraph tag is actually a block level element too, it automatically goes to its own new line, okay? Hence the reason it's on the next line. But in this case, let's go ahead and go back to our HTML document and I'm going to show you what would happen if we're dealing with the inline element because with the inline element it only takes up the space that is needed it doesn't take up the whole block okay so let's go ahead and write a anchor tag right after the image tag that we created so let's look for the image tag and you'll see that the image tag is here but we're actually going to write our anchor or our link right after the anchor that we created for the image. So let's go ahead and hit the enter key and we're going to write a anchor tag right after that. In this case I'm going to use the term Google as my link so we'll write href equals http colon four four slash google.com and that's just the HTML attribute which you should already be familiar with that. So I'm going to write the word Google here and then we're going to close that angle bracket hit control S and then let's go ahead and view this in our web browser. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the refresh key to refresh the page. And you'll see that the Google text is right after the image that we have here. Okay, and of course this image has a link in it already as well. But because a anchor tag is a inline element, it only takes up the space that is needed. So the Google text doesn't go to the next line. And in other words, it stays on the same line as the image tag because that's an inline element and also the anchor uh, or the link that surrounds this image is also an inline element so we can place inline elements on the same line okay it's not going to go to the next block okay and take up that whole space instead it's only going to use up the space that is necessary so hopefully you better understand what a block level element is versus an inline element to simply put it, a block level element takes up the whole block versus a inline element only takes up the space that is needed. And I'll actually write another link right after the text Google just to demonstrate that. So let's go ahead and go back to Notepad again. And this time we're going to create another link. And in this case, you can name it whatever you want. In this case, I'll name it, uh, let's see, maybe just XARTemplate.com and put that in parentheses I'm sorry and put that in quotes and then angle bracket and then we'll write XR template and then we'll close the anchor tag hit control s let's go back to our web browser hit the refresh key and you'll see that the XR template text 
for the link is on the same line as the Google text is on the same line as the image because it's an inline element it only takes up the space that is needed now if you wanted to separate this link a little bit better you could use a HTML entity and I'll actually demonstrate that let's go ahead and go back to our HTML document here and we're going to create a uh, space between those two links by using the the ampersand MBSP which is basically going to create a break space and then semicolon hit control s go back to our web browser hit the refresh key and now there's a space between that so that people will know that those are two separate links but don't worry if you don't understand the HTML entity part you don't need to know that you just simply need to know that for inline elements it only takes up the space that is needed and a block level element will take up the whole block so if you found this video to be helpful don't forget to embed comment share and subscribe and stay tuned for future videos